Your presence, Lord, is an open door. There's an open door to heaven right now. In the presence of God, miracles can happen. Breakthroughs can happen. Look, look, the victory can happen. But look, you got to see it by faith before you see it in reality. By faith, I see a miracle. By faith, I know breakthrough is coming. Can you just posture your heart today to say your presence here in God, I want you to move and I'm open for you to move like you've never moved before in my life. Can you open yourself to God that way? Can God be God in your life today? Can he just move in a way that you've never seen him move before? Is there, is there still more of God? Can, can I ask you that question? Is there still more of God? That you, that you don't know, that you don't have? Is there still more wisdom? Is there still more revelation? Is there still more anointing? Is there still more authority? Can you just say, God, move in my life like you've never moved before? And I see it, God, by faith. My breakthrough is coming. I know I'm in a valley right now. I'm, all, I'm in the shadow right now. I'm in a trial right now. But I see you ahead of it, God. And my breakthrough is coming. And I know Come on, church. breakthrough is coming by faith. something we're ready God for it do something like you've never done before in our life God we give you room and freedom to operate as God as Lord as sovereign God open open door right now like never before let it be done God we see it by faith breakthrough and miracles in Jesus name one more time church your best praise give it up get up come on give it up about this series, you guys. Uh, we're in part three. Our theme verse is John chapter 10. If you've missed any of these, you can catch it online. But let's jump there to our theme verse in John chapter 10, verse three through five, because Jesus said that this relationship that he would have with us would be, he used this metaphor or a picture of a shepherd and his sheep. Look at this. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. We have a speaking God. Can I get an amen, somebody? He calls his own sheep by name. Individually, he's talking to us, and he leads us out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow his voice, follow him because they know his voice. But at the same time, there's these competing voices and distractions going on. So he says, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. 
And so God is really calling us in this dynamic relationship where, where we would put the wrong voices aside and really be tuned in to the voice of God leading us and guiding us through life in a very personal and intimate relationship. Now, next week, we're, we're actually going to cover a topic um, about the how do you know it's God? You know, how, how do I know that's God's voice? How do I know that prompting or that nudge is God and not the taco truck that last, uh, you know, that I tried to visit last night or something? So how do you, we're going to, I'm going to give you the filter or the litmus test on how you can know that, that, uh, that you're hearing from God or that nudge or that compelling is actually from God. Because sometimes, man, I'll hear some things, some crazy things from people. They think God is speaking to them and they'll tell me what they said, what God said. And I'm, and I have to tell people sometimes that is not God. Okay. That's just, because uh, honestly, I've heard someone say that God wants me to leave my wife. I was, I wasn't supposed to be married. And I said that, that doesn't even, okay. That doesn't even line up with scripture. So first of all, boom, just gone. Okay. That's one point already. You guys will get the rest. That doesn't even line up with scripture. Okay. So how do we know? Like it, this is actually God leading me in, in guiding me. Um, through my life. I'll give you the litmus test and stuff, but I wanted to, to really talk about the why in the how. So why today, why does God speak to us? What's his reason behind his communication with us? And then how? What are the, how does he speak to every one of us? This thought we kind of been opening it up with every week is, is that if, if God doesn't speak to us, if God doesn't speak to us, then the greatest disservice that that we could do to people is actually tell them that they could have a personal relationship with God. That, that, that's just, it, it would be a lie. It would be leading them astray. Uh, if God doesn't actually speak, then there is no personal and intimate relationship, but we serve a speaking God, church. We serve, and one of my joys is to make sure that everyone understands and enters into this relationship with God. It's not what religion pictures. It's not sometimes what some churches even paint of who God is. He's not this distant, mad, angry, yelling at you, fussing at you kind of God. No, he is a personal God who wants to have a personal relationship with you. So look at this here in Matthew chapter 123 today. This is a Christmas, usually a Christmas verse, but I want you to see something. It says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And watch this. He's going to have the name Jesus, but they're going to call him something different. They're going to nickname him. They will call him Emmanuel, because he's going to have this unique characteristic that's unlike any other God before him, even up to this point, that that word, he says, means God with us. He is a personal God. And I hope, I hope today, listen, I hope every one of you learned something today. I hope you grow today. I hope you take some notes. But beyond that, I've been praying, I've been praying for every one of you that you would not only learn something today, but that right where you're seated, that God will speak to your heart. And I believe that if you'll just give him a few moments and lean in. That God wants to share something to you right where you're seated today. That it, it, can, it can be more than just growing in knowledge. Oh, learning about God and the voice of God. Learn, grow, great. But will you turn, tune in and be open to God speaking to you right where you're, seat, church, right where you're seated? Amen, church? Amen. Amen. I believe so. I believe that God wants to speak to you right where you're at. And I'm going to tell you why. Why does, why does God speak to us? There's really three reasons. Why? And then I'm going to tell you how. But there's really three reasons why God speaks to us. Write them down, you guys, if you're taking notes. The first reason is that God speaks to facilitate friendship. That's why. It's, it's, you cannot have this intimate relationship, this, a friendship with God, without communication, without speaking. And, and a lot of us, if we're honest, a lot of us do not picture our relationship with God as that of a friendship. And I hope to change that. I hope, that, I hope that you would shift the picture of how you see your relationship with God. Because Jesus even said in John chapter 15, he said, servants don't know what their master is doing. And so I don't speak to you as my servants. Now look, I'm, there's a place for servanthood. Servanthood is great. Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. So servanthood is Christ-like. And it should be the posture of your life. But Jesus said, that's not how I speak to you. That's not our relationship. Isn't that of servant?" Master, he said, I speak to you as what? As my friend. That's how I speak to you. I speak to you as my friend. And I've told you everything that my father has told me in secret. He said, I made known to you. Which, by the way, if you want to know the secrets of heaven, you want to know the best way to know the secrets of heaven? Become a friend of Jesus. Because Jesus tells his secrets to his friends. So who, who do you tell your secrets to? 
Who do you, you, you tell them to your friends, those who are closest to you, you've built a relationship with, who you've built trust with. God wants to show you so much more. He wants to reveal to you things about you, about your life, about your future, about the kingdom of heaven, but he's only going to share those secrets with, with his friends. He speaks to us to facilitate friendship. Look at Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. It said that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. And I, I, I say that to you because we see people trying to pray and to get into their, their prayer life, and we see it all the time, and they try to wax all eloquent and fancy with their language and stuff. They change up their, they, you, you guys know what I'm talking about, like, thou, is, thine is the kingdom and the glory, thou, to, O Lord, and all these thee, thou, though, it's, you guys know God isn't from England, right? You guys know that? He's not from England. He doesn't speak Old English, all right? And it's not more anointed and powerful if you speak King James, okay? Honestly, that does, that's not even what God's looking for. God is not looking for you to be fancy. He's not looking for you to wow him with your communication or your eloquence or your ability to quote to him his own word. It's all, he's just looking for a conversation. That's what he's looking for. And we get that with friends, right? We get, you guys don't talk like that to your friends, right? You wouldn't have any friends if you're a, how art thou doing? You know, ain't no one want to hang out with you. Come on now. You're going to tell secrets to you. You're a weirdo. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm sorry. I went too far. I love you. I love you. But the, I'm serious. It's a friendship. And so we get it with friends. But then we get into, we get into this relationship with God, and it changes. It changes how we talk. We change how we interact with him. And Jesus is saying, man, can, you just, can we just have a conversation? Because I'm speak, I, that's not how I speak to you. Why are you speaking to me like that? I just want to talk to you like a, like a friend. He wants to have a personal and intimate relationship with you. So let's, we need to change the way we view that relationship. He's speaking to you and wants to speak to you to facilitate a friendship. That's the picture we need to have. That's why. Here's the second reason why God speaks to us. He speaks to us to give guidance. He speaks to us to give guidance. Now, Here's the tension with this one. There's some tension with this one because um, anytime that God like gives guidance, if God gives you, guides you away from something that you're doing, chances are you're not going to like it, right? Because you wouldn't be doing that and going in that direction if you didn't think that that was the direction that was for you or if you didn't want to be in that relationship or have that job or do that hobby, or whatever it is, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't want to do it, or think that it was right for you. So the tension here is when God actually speaks to you and gives you guidance in an area, and tries to go, ah, ah, and, and, and leads you away from that, there's going to be some, wait a second, I don't like that kind of feel. But you just, you need to know that God is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end, and he sees things very differently from you and I see things. He sees the end product. One of the most difficult things to do as a pastor is to lead people through seasons of life where they, they, they can't see beyond the heartache. Namely, one of the most difficult is death. When there's death of a loved one, death of a family, especially of a child. And the younger the child is, the harder it is to lead families and parents through that season. And I lean on God's word of Isaiah chapter 57. 1. It's not in your notes if you want to write it down, but God tells us the reason why some people, why good people die early. Seemingly to us, why do they go early? God says that those good people, the righteous ones, they're taken early to spare them from the evil that was to come in their life. That's why. It was actually God's grace. He said, no, I'm going to spare this child. I'm going to spare this person because they're righteous, because they're good, because I love them. I'm going to spare. And see, we can't see it. We don't see it, but God, is, God wants to guide us through life. Look at Isaiah 58, 11. God says, I will show you where to go. Wouldn't that be nice if God just showed you where to go through life? Even, look at this, even in the emptiest of places, he says, even in the valley of the shadow of death, even when, it's, when I'm tired and I'm empty and I'm in the trial, I'm in the storm, God says, even there, I will show you where to go if you lean in and listen. I'll show you where to go. I'm just trying to give you the reasons why he's talking, you guys, because he's a good father and he's trying to, he's trying to guide us. And he's trying to facilitate a friendship. Here's the third one. And this is a fun one. God speaks to provide perspective. To provide perspective. Again, it's a perspective that he has and that we don't currently have. Now, now listen to me, church. Listen. Not everything that you are seeing is what's really going on. Are you hearing me, church? All right. Not everything that you're seeing with your eyes is what's really going on. God wants to reveal to you, to unveil to you a whole different reality. 
a whole different realm. He doesn't live in where you can see. God lives in a supernatural realm, in a spiritual realm. And he wants to reveal things to you that are not just trapped and caught up into this reality and this realm. He wants to reveal some supernatural things to you, some things that go beyond your sight. That's what actually 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says. It says that we walk by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it. I, I, we walk by faith, not by what we see, not by sight. Well, let me put it this way. We need to put listening over looking. We need to prioritize that. Prioritize your listening over your looking. I was reading about this, this, a story about the Wisconsin Badger football team. They were, they were playing a home game. And, and they were getting stomped. I don't know who they were playing against, but they were getting stomped. And it was like seemingly every time that, that they did something wrong, the Badgers or the home team did something right, and they just, the, the crowd would cheer. The home crowd would be like, yeah, woo. And it would just, it was like confusing. Everybody, the coaches, the players, the announcers, were like, why are the home crowd cheering? And they're getting, you know, on that play. And, and, and the announcers found out that a lot of the people in the, in, the, in the audience were actually listening in headphones to the Milwaukee Brewers baseball game. <laughs> and, and every time they would make a play, the baseball game, they would hear, they cheer and shout and confuse everybody. So, so, so listen, they were, listen, they were looking at defeat, but they were listening to victory. Oh my goodness, if we could just learn how to, how to do, how to look, how to not get so caught up. They were looking in one realm and they were listening to another realm and they were responding by what they were hearing, not what they were seeing. If we as children of God could just walk by faith, by what we hear and not by sight, always what you're seeing with your eyes and lean in and listen to God and respond to not what you're seeing, but respond to what you're hearing from heaven. Oh my goodness, your, your life would change, you guys. God wants to speak to you to provide a perspective that your eyes can't give you. Mm-mm-mm. Someone's getting it. Come on, somebody. God knows we need some things. There are some things in this world that are going on that can distract us, that can discourage us, that can get us depressed if we just get caught up looking. But you need to prioritize listening over looking. So God, God wants, he's speaking to us. He wants to speak to us. We, we know it is. Hopefully you're bought in and you understand, yeah, God's trying to speak, but how? How? How, Pastor? How is he, how's he speaking? How am I gonna, how's that going to operate in my life? I did this study. In the backside of your notes, I was actually going to list out how God speaks and the ways that God speaks. And there's a lot of ways that the Bible shares with us. I listed at least 12, 12 different ways. Uh, God speaks through his word, the word of God. It's living and active. It's God breathed, the Bible, the, 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 the Bible says. So his word, the Bible says he also speaks through nature. Through, through the wind and the waves and the fire and the earth. He'll speak through that. He'll speak through circumstances. He'll speak through pain. He'll speak through prophets and pastors and leaders. And he'll speak in a lot of different ways, different really for a lot of different people. But I decided to focus on one way, the one way that God is speaking to every single one of us. He speaks to us in this way, to every one of us. And I believe it's the way that we're not recognizing. We're not recognizing it. And it's, it's just the whispers of God. It's the, the gentle voice. It's the, the promptings in our spirit. It's this, I just sense that God is saying or God is, is moving me. It's just this whisper of the Holy Spirit. It comes from 1 Kings chapter 19 where God reveals to the prophet Elijah of his nature and how he does communicate. Now look, God does communicate in a lot of different ways and he, to a lot of different people, but I, this, this way, the whisper, is how God is speaking and does speak to every single one of us. Every one of us is, is God is trying, he's speaking constantly to us, whispering to our hearts and our souls. And we're not recognizing it. And he reveals to Elijah, now you think that I speak this way, you think this is where I am, but I'm actually... I'm actually here. Let's see what he says to Elijah. 1 Kings 19. The Lord said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. He's, he's, trying to, he's, he's saying, Elijah, I need to show you that I'm with you, that I'm a personal God. So go do this. Go stand because the Lord, I'm about to pass by. I'm going to show you what I look like. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. There he is. There's God. But the Lord was not in the wind. He didn't speak that way. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. You think he was, but he wasn't. 
And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. In some translations, it says a still, small voice. And I want to teach you how to recognize the whispers of God, because I believe he's doing it more than you realize. So let me give you the four areas of, your, of our life that God is whispering into so that you can not only recognize it, but start to respond to the whispers of God. Write these down. The four areas of God's whispers. Number one, he whispers encouragement. God whispers encouragement, and I believe he's doing it all day long. We get discouraged we get, we get easily frustrated or flustered. Something happens. We wake up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever. The enemy's lying to us right when we get up. And I believe God is right there encur- speaking life and encouragement into us. And he's not correcting and yelling and saying, hey, what's wrong with you? When are you going to get this right? When you start thinking right? No, that's not what he said. That's not God. God's not saying that. Look what Romans chapter 8 says he's saying. That the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Where? Deep in our hearts. What does he say? He tells us that I'm his child. Amen. That's what he says. I, I'm his child. You're my child. You got to understand that's how God sees you as part of, a part of his family. I love Isaiah 55 in the message, verse 3. It says, pay attention. Come close now. Can you circle that? Come close. Because, listen, y- you want to hear the whisper of God but you're not close enough to hear his voice. See, the reason why some of you aren't hearing the, the still, small voice is, the only reason is proximity. It's just your proximity. You're not close enough. I mean, it's too, it's too far away, and God's not going to yell at you. He ain't going to, God's just, he's going to say, hey, pay attention. Come close now. Come close, because this is how I speak to your heart, deep to your heart. Some of you want to hear God, and you need to hear God, and you know it, but you're staying at a distance, and God is saying, hey, hey, draw in, draw in. Come close now. Listen carefully, because I got something life-giving and life-nourishing to say to you. That's the Word of God. You know the Word of God isn't in that, you know, that, that you're terrible, you're no good. That's not God, man. God's Word is life-giving and life-nourishing. I promise you this, that as long as I'm pastor preaching here in any campus of Discovery Church, you will never hear condemnation word that you are terrible, no good, get yourself right, come to the altar and, and, and repent, you dirty sinner type word. That ain't happening here. What you're going to hear here is the life-giving, life-nourishing word of God that, that, that says, God is for you, not against you. God loves you regardless of who you are or where you've been. Amen, somebody? In fact, he said, I've made, I've made a lasting covenant commitment with you. You ain't getting rid of I've made a covenant with you that he knows what you did and he's still in love with you. Why? Because he would say to you, you're my child. I believe that's, that's God would whisper encouragement to you and say, hey, you're my, you're my child. You know, my kids, sometimes they do stuff and say stuff that make me want to hurt them. You know what I'm saying, parent? Okay, make me want to throw them across the room. So every time I say something like that, I get looks like, Pat, you shouldn't be talking like, come on, man, I'm just kidding, okay? I think it, but I don't do it. It's different. So, but every now and then, they'll, they'll, they'll do something. But I've told my kids, I've told my kids that there is nothing that they can do. Some of you have probably told your kids something like this. I've told them, there is nothing you can do that will ever stop me from being your daddy. I will always love you. I will always be your daddy. That's, and, and you need to know that. Like, God, God wants you to know you are my child. I've told my two oldest, Grace and Abby, I haven't told my youngest yet this, but I've told them, if you think you're going to leave this house and, and go make mistakes in your decisions, go live how you want to live, and, and it, it, you don't think I'm going to chase you down to the end of the world, you have got another thing coming. I'll be right there on your heels telling you how much God loves you, how much God has a purpose for your life, that, that you are a leader, you're a world changer, and I'll, I'll peek over that fence and say, that ain't who you are. God, you're a, you're a child of God. I don't care. I told him, I said, that's who you are, even when they're not acting like it. They are my child. They're my child. Listen, God knows what you did last night, and he still loves you, and you're still part of the family, and he didn't kick you out. God, God knows the thoughts you were thinking, and he still loves you. He didn't kick you out of the family, okay? He loves you. You are his child, and I think that would be the second thing he would say. He'd say, I love you. I love you. If you just whisper, man, you'd lean into the whisper of encouragement. I think he'd tell you, agape, 
unconditional love I have for you. I believe he'd say something like this, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. Some of you, some of you think to yourself right now, there, wait a second, Pastor, I haven't really done anything to make God proud of me. Well, that's because God doesn't see you for what you're doing. He sees you for who you're becoming. Remember, he is the beginning and the end, you guys. He sees you differently, who you can be. And I don't look at my kids on, for, through the lens of what they're doing. I see my kids through the lens of who they will become. They might not be acting like it, but I tell them, man, you are a leader, not a follower. You are a world changer. God has a purpose for your life. You got a calling on your life, even when they don't act like it. You know why? Because I see who they're becoming, not how they're acting. God sees you. And I'm telling you, if you just lean in and hear the whisper of God, he'd tell you, I'm so proud of you, son. May I, maybe he's not pleased with how you're acting right now, no. But he's proud of you because you're his. If he had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it, okay? <laughs> he, he whispers encouragement. Here's the second area that he whispers into our life, and that's he whispers warnings. Man, he whispers warnings. This is a good one because the Bible doesn't use that exact phrase. It doesn't use that, but, but it's all over the Bible like that God is actually whispering warnings. Let me give you some Christianese. Maybe you've heard some of this Christianese before where, where sometimes a Christian will say, I feel led by the Spirit. Or, or maybe they say, I got a check in my spirit. What they're just saying is that they were going in this direction. The Holy Spirit compelled them, put like just g- gave them something, and they said, wait a second, that's an impression wait a second, I just, I feel like I need to move. I think I need to change my direction. Let me show it to you in scripture in Acts 16. It says they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach. Man, what are you talking, like the Holy Spirit actually didn't want them to preach? That's a good thing. Why would he not want them to preach? Well, just because it's a good thing doesn't make it a God thing. Look, there are a lot of good things that you could choose and do in your life, but that's not the litmus test of why you should do certain things. Oh, is it good? Is it going to be a good result for me? That's not the key. The key is the voice of God. Because although it was a good thing, he was going to get killed in Asia if he didn't obey the voice of God. And then it says, after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but again, the Spirit did not permit them. You guys need this dynamic happening in your relationship with God where you think that's a good thing. You think it is, but if you lean and hear the whisper of God, he'd say, no, that, wrong, that's the wrong step. That's the wrong time. Well, that's not, that's not for you. If you just lean in, he would warn you. I don't know how many emails that I've typed out or Facebook replies. Ooh, oh, oh, you want to go there? All right. And I'm, just, and I'm like, I'm putting a good one, man. I'm like tearing somebody up, man. I'm, mm. And then and I, I get to the end of the entire email or, or reply, and I'll... Hear the whisper of God. I'm glad you got that out of your system. (laughs) Delete it. (laughs) I'm just so thankful for the whispers of God, the warnings of God. I'm telling you, you have a God who wants to speak warnings. And for some of you, maybe it's this phrase. Don't do it. Hey, if I were you, I wouldn't go there. If I were you, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't date him. I know you really want a relationship bad, but he's, he's, want, he's, he's wanting you to compromise your values. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. For some of you in your marriage, you're, you're flirting, you're on the line, you're, you're pressing up. Maybe you haven't crossed it or you think I haven't crossed it yet, but you're getting really close to it. And if you would lean in and hear the whisper of God, he'd say, stop playing with that fire. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't go there. He'd warn you. Or maybe he'd say, and the secret. And the secret that that, that you've been carrying around all by yourself, not thinking nobody thinking that nobody knows, and and it's destroying your life. Now you don't have to tell everybody. I would encourage you not to tell everybody your secret, okay? But you do need some people. This is and this is why small groups are so important to your life as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a believer. Because some of you are carrying around a secret and it is destroying you. And just like your relationship with God, the closer you get and the more of a friend you become to God, he'll share his secrets with you. You need that with other people. You need to get close enough to build. And that's what small groups are here, man. So you can get close enough with not everybody in the whole group, but maybe a few. Close enough just say, hey, this is what's really going on. This is, this is what I'm dealing with, man. This is, this is my past or this is my hurts. 
that you can get honest with someone and tell someone your secret. Actually, it's, it's sometimes not even in a small group. I love the, the after the small group lawn conversations. How many know what I'm talking about? The front lawn conversations where you don't go home, you stop on the lawn, and, and a few people huddle by the car or something, and, and you just, you, you get the courage, and you build this trust with someone after a while, and you, you take off the mask, and you say, here's what I'm dealing with. You know, I've been, I got this coworker, and she's showing me attention, and man, I, I can't, I need someone to help me, hold me accountable. You need that. You need that in your life. The Holy Spirit will whisper to you in the secret, or maybe the Holy Spirit will whisper something like this to you: "Get help." Hey, you can't do it alone. You're not supposed to do it alone. Get help. Ask somebody for help. See, there is a dynamic all over the Bible. All over the Bible, Isaiah thirty twenty one says, "Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you. It's gentle. It's a nudge. It's this prompting saying, this is the way. Walk in it.'" And again, I don't pretend to be the person that can tell you what that is, but I can lead you to a relationship with God who can, who can whisper to your heart, deep to your heart. Here's the third one. Number three, he whispers direction. God wants to whisper to you. He wants you close enough to whisper direction to you. Some of you, man, you're looking for direction in your life. You're looking for direction in your marriage. You're looking for direction in your finances. You're looking direction for direction in, in, in your job or you're, you're about to purchase something. Here's the secret to this one of getting God's direction in your life. Involve him in the process. Just, just involve God in the process of your decision making. Invite him in. When Veronica and I are about to make a decision, if, especially if it's a big decision, a big, especially if it's like purchasing something that's kind of big, we let the high and the hype of that wanting that thing kind of die down, and we go to God in prayer. God, is this the right step for us to take at the right time? Invite him and include him in the decision-making process. Um, Luke 2.27, this is a story where Jesus uh, was being dedicated in the temple as a baby. And Simeon, it says, was moved by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit said, hey, I, Simeon, I got an assignment for you. See, there, there's the God child I need, you to go, I need you to go visit. And he went into the temple courts. Acts 20.22 20, says, and now compelled by the Spirit. What is that? He just felt this direction from God. He said, I'm going to Jerusalem because I'm compelled by the Spirit, and I don't even know what's going to happen there. She said, listen, some of you are, are, you're not hearing, maybe you are hearing the voice of God, and you're not responding to it because you want steps two, three, four, five, and six. And God says, no, I'll give you step one. Obey me there, and then I'll give you step two. I'll whisper the direction. If you just walk by faith and not by sight, I'll take care of you. If you just walk by faith and not by your own understanding, I'll take care of you. He said, I was compelled by the Spirit. I didn't even know what was going to happen, but I stepped out and I went. And some of you know what, what that's like to step out and see God move on your behalf. I don't know what God is saying specifically, but he wants to direct your life. He could be saying something like, slow down. You're going too fast, too hard, and you're missing the point. Slow down. Or he may be saying to somebody the opposite. He may be saying, do it now. Come on, now. Now's the time. The time is ripe. Now, time to invest, time to sacrifice, time to jump in. Why not today? Why not now? Do it now. The Spirit of God will whisper into you. Or maybe it's take the next step. Come on, there's a next step. It's time. I've let you sit here for long enough. It's, there's a next step for you. What would it be like? What would that, wouldn't that be so cool if everyone at Discovery Church this season just took one step closer to Jesus? in whatever area that he saw in us, that we just said, yes, God, and took that step. For some of you, it's joining the dream team. It's like serving somewhere. Step three is today at, at 6.30. If, if you're here and you feel like, man, there's, I gotta take this next step, and you feel the whisper of God, come today at 6.30 to step three. It's, an, it's a ministry orientation. I like to share, I'll share what it means to be part of the team, and then there's a whole bunch of orientations that happen today, depending on what ministry environment. You can come and check it out. Take, take the next step, God might be saying. Here's the last one, the last area of whisper. I love this one because God whispers dreams. I love this one, man, because uh, God will whisper dreams inside of your heart that you could not even imagine, that you couldn't do yourself. You'll just deposit it, and I'm so grateful for the dreams that God has given me. I'm so grateful for God intervening and redirecting my life and giving me a dream of discovery and putting different dreams in my life. 
Listen to this. Job 33 says this. For God speaks. God speaks. God speaks again and again. Look, church, he's whispering. Are you close enough? Are you in proximity? He's speaking again and again. And he whispers in dreams and even in visions in the night. Now, by the way, I've never had a vision of the night, like a sleep, a sleep vision, like in my dream. I know God doesn't speak to me that way, okay? Because most of my dreams, I'm like in Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings territory or something like that. Or, or I'm Jason Bourne running from the world, you know what I'm saying? Cracking necks. No, I'm kidding. But, but so he ain't speaking to me in my dreams. I'm just, I'm just saying. But he'll speak to everybody differently. And he, just, he just does. He'll speak to all of us differently in the way that, that, that he knows how to speak to us. God speaks in dreams. Acts 2, 17, it says, in the last days, which I do believe that's today, the last days. As far as I can read and interpret the scriptures, everything has been fulfilled or is being fulfilled right now for Jesus to come back. We're in that, in that, in that period of, of the first return of Christ and the second return of Christ, the rapture of his church. This is the last days. And so he says, hey, in, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on who? All. On all people. Well, what is that going to look like, God, when you pour out your spirit? Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vi visions. And your old men will dream dreams. God says, I'm going to put something inside of you so you can be in the middle of these last days and where it's so dark and trials and tribulation and wars and rumors of wars and sickness and disease and so that you can be a solution in the middle of the madness. So you can be light in the middle of the darkness that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh so that they can be a beacon of hope to a dying and dark world. That's, that's what God has called us to do in these last days. So what, what God might be saying, if you listen and lean in, he might be saying, go all in. Go all in, man. Why not? Why why, why be a part-time Christian? Why be one foot in, one foot out? Why, I mean, you, why, why be part of the darkness? Why don't you just go all into the light? Or he may say, give God your best. Don't just, some of you are holding back, you know it, and maybe it's time to serve God and give and participate and just don't be a spectator, but a participator in God's work and kingdom. You know, where you say, you know, I'm just not gonna go halfway anymore. I'm just not going to just go halfway, come and go, and just live my life. No, I'm going to go all in and give God my best. And I know if you'd lean in, you hear God say this last one, make a difference. I believe that's what you were created for. It's, it's, it's part of our vision here at Discovery Church. We believe that if you will love God passionately, that if you are in an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and you love others authentically, we will trample on the heads of scorpion. We will take back territory of darkness, man. We will advance God's kingdom forcefully. God, there, we will change the world collectively and make a difference. Amen, church? So I'm encouraging you just to pause, man, and posture your heart and life today to just speak to me, Lord, and do two things. Say this. This is kind of last two feelings. I want you to posture your heart this way to say, speak to me, Lord. I'm open to hear. I'm ready, God, to hear you. Literally, if you just come in and, God, and do this right here, it'll posture you for revelation. I love what Samuel said from week one in our series in verse, chapter three, verse nine. He said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I would love for you to just have that routine wherever you would go, that you would just posture yourself in such a way to know that you, that you are open, not just here, but out there, everywhere you go, that you're that leaning into the whisper of God wherever you're at. Just several months ago, Veronica and I and the kids were at a restaurant, and it was really busy. Someone must have called in, you could tell, because the waitress had way too many tables. And, um, and everyone was getting frustrated, and, and people like shaking their glasses and stuff like that, like, come on, man, terrible service, and I don't know what it was. It just, I just felt a little, a whisper of God for that girl. That she need, that God told me she needs to be encouraged and blessed. And, and, I, and I don't paint, please don't, I'm not painting a picture that I always get this right, you guys. And I'm just, because oftentimes, honestly, I'm the guy shaking the glass going, what is going on here? Come on. Okay, it's just this time I, I was more tuned in than normal. 
and I, and I want to be more tuned in. I want to be more, more tuned in and open to God's whispers all throughout my life and wherever I go. Because in this moment, in the middle of the chaos, where I could have been selfish and self-seeking, God showed me it. It's just like, she needed a word. And as she passed by, I said, hey, because she, oh, hey, I'll get it right. I said, you know what? Don't even worry about us. We're okay. You're doing, I just want you to, you look busy, but you're handling it really well. You're doing a great job. God bless you. And it just, she even kind of like it blew her. And I saw a little tear just form. And she sucked it back in. <laughs> but I knew that was, and, and my wife and I, we just blessed her. We gave her a generous a generous tip, and I didn't invite her to discover anything like that. It's not, it's not why we, we, we did it. We just did it to, to you know, because the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and again, I don't do it all the time, but that time I was tuned in. And I'm just saying, there are 7 billion people on the planet, and God had one little princess right there who needed some encouragement. He was just looking for someone who was tuned in to hear his voice, to encourage his daughter. And I'm, if we were just postured that way, guys, speak to us, Lord. I'm open to hear. I think he's speaking so much more than we realize, whispering to us, directing and guiding and warning and encouraging. And not only that, not only say, speak to me, Lord, I'm open to hear, but secondly to say, and I'm eager to respond. I'm going to not only hear your word, God, but I'm going to respond to your voice. Write that word down and bow your heads right there. Let's go to God in prayer. Right after you write that down. Come on, let's bow your heads all across this worship center. Speak to us, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Give us ears that are tuned in to what you're saying. If you're speaking, God, even right now, speak encouragement to discovery today. Speak warnings. Speak directions, God. Speak, speak dreams to your people. Lord, give us ears to hear. Know that we are willing to respond. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening.